and we're back at it again with the Battle of the Chipset Titans. In each corner is a competitor looking to take out the other in a free-for-all showdown. The first contestant is the best of the best from Snapdragon, the 8th Gen 1. Next up is Samsung's chipset of choice in Europe and many other countries, the AMD GPU-driven Exynos 2200. In the third corner, we have the specially designed chipset of Google's newest flagship, the Tensor. Last up is the beast of consistency, Apple's A15 Bionic. We've got these baddies running at full speed, trying to decipher the complex codes that we're feeding them. In layman's terms, we're gonna be running a few benchmark tests along with checking how long it takes to open up certain apps and programs, rendering 4K video, and much more. The competition of a lifetime is about to begin, so get ready to let the facts speak. We'll be starting off with Adobe Lightroom, which is an image manipulation software. Its primary uses include importing, editing, and sharing large numbers of digital images. Lightroom's editing functions include white balance, tone, color grading, detail, and much more. What we have here is 50 JPEG and 50 RAW files, and we're gonna see which processor has the edge over the other. For the first test, we decided to add a preset to these photos and watch as all the processors scrambled to apply it as fast as possible. After the presets were neatly laid out on top of the photos, it was time for some good old rendering. The results of the preset being applied was almost equal through all of the chips. The Snapdragon finished this task in 34 seconds, while the newly created Tensor chip of Google was just one second slower at 35 seconds. Exynos was able to get things done in 38 seconds, while surprisingly, the Bionic chip of Apple needed 46 seconds. When we got down to rendering though, that's where the tables were flipped. The Exynos chip needed 9 minutes and 18 seconds to finish the render, with the Tensor following close by at 8 minutes and 49 seconds. The Snapdragon was significantly faster with 7 minutes and 39 seconds, but the A15 Bionic only needed 3 minutes and 1 second to finish the render. That is a huge difference and it kind of signifies how Apple's signature chip has been designed for renders. With these results, I can comfortably say that the Bionic has shown the best overall performance for Adobe Lightroom. Oh, and by the way, if you like this type of content, a like and a sub would be amazing. Up next is Adobe Premiere Rush. It's a free mobile and desktop video editing app for creativity on the go. The way we decided to utilize Rush was to create a timeline with a 1 minute and 6 second 4K video. To make it even more challenging, we also added some 4K B-roll. If you're not familiar with what a B-roll is, it's the footage you commonly see in our videos of me holding the phones and looking around. Finally, we put in some graphics animations which have their own unique way of putting pressure on the chipsets. After all was said and done, Rush just didn't work on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. We uninstalled, reinstalled, reset the settings, even factory reset the phone, but it just refused to work and unfortunately, we don't have a result in this category for the Exynos chip, giving it an automatic last place. The Snapdragon actually had the worst score by completing the render in 2 minutes and 53 seconds, with the Tensor coming in right after with 2 minutes and 18 seconds. The iPhone's Bionic chip was the clear winner, taking down the competition in only 1 minute and 18 seconds. Third in line is something most of you have probably heard of before. Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet developed by Microsoft for Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. Text files, or basically anything with a bunch of letters and numbers, don't usually push processors to the limit, since they're very easy to open. The only way for us to be able to turn it into a contest where the devices actually had to do something was to input a huge Excel file with plenty of calculations. How huge? Approximately 60,000 lines. The timer stopped as soon as the file was able to be edited, and that timer was only 7 seconds for the Bionic, 15 seconds for the Snapdragon, 18 seconds for the Exynos, and 20 seconds for the Tensor. Another impressive result by Apple here, managing to finish the process in only half the time of its closest competitor. So this stuff was quite new and not really seen too much in comparisons. Time to go a little old school. I'm very sure you've all heard of Geekbench. It basically benchmarks a CPU and uses a scoring system that separates single core and multi core performance, as well as workloads that supposedly simulate real world scenarios. I'll be telling you the single core and multi core results separately to be able to easily differentiate between the results and to have a better understanding of which CPU managed to perform better in which area. 
For the single core scores, we have the Tensor with 720 points. After that comes the Exynos with 977 points. Snapdragon, which is known to excel at these tests, will take second place with 1196 points, while the crown will go once again to the Bionic with 1746 points. Moving on to the multi-core results, the order changes up slightly, quickly moving on to 3D Mark. 3D Mark is a computer benchmarking tool that is used to determine the performance of a computer's 3D graphic rendering and CPU workload processing capabilities. It has several tests and we chose to use the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. We have 20 loops at our disposal, with the application giving us the best and the worst one for comparison. The difference between the scores is also important because it tells you how consistently the CPU is able to perform. Pretty surprising scores here as the Tensor is in last place for the best loop with 1,303 points. Next up is the Exynos with 1,777 points. The Bionic will take second place with a respectable 2,707 points, but the Snapdragon is miles ahead of its competition with 7,214 points. Where did that come from? For the worst loops, the Tensor managed 780 points, which gave it a stability rating of only 59.9%. Exynos got 1,289 points and had a 72.5% rating. The Bionic chip managed to get 1,885 points and achieved a rating of 69.6% .6 for stability. Snapdragon pulled out 4,635 points while maintaining a 64.3% stability rating. What a massive difference we saw here and I'm curious to see the results of the last remaining benchmark test, N22. The Tensor is once again struggling to beat its competition with 494,033 points. The Bionic chip for the first time will come after the Tensor at 775,092 points. Exynos will be taking second place, very slightly ahead of Apple at 797,250 points, and Snapdragon once again takes first place with 922,069 points. Some pretty up and down results close to the finish line, so let's make a quick recap. Apple's new A15 Bionic chip won the Lightroom, Rush, Excel, and Geekbench, while Snapdragon won the 3D Mark and N22 test. Tensor had the worst results overall, while Exynos pretty much took third place every step of the way. So, two things. Snapdragon still looks better than Exynos, which is sure to give Samsung some headaches because they're pretty much forcing the Exynos chip on their fans in countries that don't have the Snapdragon variant for sale. Secondly, Apple's A15 Bionic looks insane. The main reason it outperformed the competition is because of how Apple is able to customize everything in their phones to their needs, which seems to be something they will continue to capitalize on for years to come. Well guys, I appreciate you watching this video until the end. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to fill up that comment section right after you hit that like button and drop a sub, which would help us out a lot. Until the next video my dudes, see you soon. Oh,